Let's talk about flooding. Flooding, also called diffuse physiological arousal, is very important as a couple to know about. It's one of the best indicators that a conversation is not going to go well because you're basically in fight or flight and you're not going to be able to communicate well because you're not going to be able to express yourself or hear incoming information. This is when your heart rate is above 100 beats per minute or when your um, oxygen levels are below 95%. It's important to know that there are many things that you can do to both become aware of when you're entering this state or when you're getting at risk of entering this state or when your partner is so that you can bring the conversation to a calmer place and lower your heart rate. Repair attempts are really important. Anything is an effective repair if it helps bring your or your partner's heart rates down during a conflict conversation. However, sometimes we just stumble into the fight or flight response And it's really important to stop what you're doing and make sure that you are self-soothing or soothing your partner in order to be able to talk again. First, it's really important to try deep breathing, making sure that you're taking long, slow breaths to get oxygen back into your system. And then another technique that you can use if and when you become flooded is to practice muscle tension and then relaxation. You can also intentionally make your muscles heavy and then lighten them and imagine that happening. You can also work towards making tense muscles warm, you know, imagining um, warmth throughout your body and then also visual mental imaging that evokes a relaxation response, such as imagining yourself on a beach or in a field or anywhere else other than ruminating and continuing to imagine why you're angry or why you're um, upset at your partner. So when you know that you're getting flooded or when your partner's getting flooded, the best thing that you can do is to put the brakes on and to take at least a 20-minute break And for you and your partner to have a hopefully previously agreed upon uh, way that you do this that both people can get on board with and will find um, okay um, to agree to. So you you both want to have a conversation about it when you're both calm about the types of things that trigger you that tend to make you feel flooded. You know, for example, if there's certain words that upset you. Or if there are certain topics, you know, especially if the horsemen are present, that you're, you're more likely to become flooded. And you really want to avoid blaming your partner here. And you just want to discuss what do I need to avoid becoming flooded. So, for, for example, talking slowly, using the softened startup. Um, you know, maybe there's something that you really find reassuring that your partner can say or do when you're talking about a tif- difficult subject. Then you want to discuss how do you typically bring up these issues um, or irritability or your complaints? How do you, you know, think about how do you store these things up or not? Do you, are you more likely to bring them up or do you just wait and then they blow up? Um, ask each other if there's anything that you can do that you know would soothe each other when you are upset. Sometimes you literally have to leave the room and be in a different place, but sometimes Perhaps if you stop talking, um, some couples will hold each other or just sit and hold hands and make eye contact until their, you know, their heart rates drop. Um, and you also need to come up with an agreed upon signal that you can develop for letting each other know if one of you feels flooded. And you need to both agree to take an effective break and to agree what that looks like and to agree, to do, agree how long that will be. So, you know, at least 20 minutes and you need to schedule a return time to talk again. This must be a real break in which you're not thinking about the things that keep the distress or upsetness alive, such as thoughts of righteous indignation, 
you know, I'm right, they're wrong, I'm good, they're bad. That's kind of um, ineffective uh, ways of calming that actually just keeps you um, more, you know, in, in more of a place of contempt and flooding. And, you know, you, you don't want to rehearse any sorts of feelings and thoughts that portray yourself as an innocent victim. You know, and it is important to note that men are more likely to do this than women. Women certainly do this too. But men um, we've studied at the Gottman Institute are just more likely to get flooded more quickly, even if a complaint is brought up in a softened way. It's just very hard sometimes to hear um, negative feelings from our partner. And so getting better and better at being able to stay present and not get flooded while listening to a complaint is going to be critical. And so learning how to relax and calm down during a break so that you can come back and re-engage with your partner and really actually talk about a problem without getting flooded is critical for for the success long-term in a relationship.